send me a text when it's done. Hi, called to Dr. Roberts as, as she closed the large metal door. She could hear the automatic locks sealing her off from the outside world when the metal plates set into place. The locking system was excessively excessive and annoying at times, but Hi knew what it, what it, that it was necessary. She traveled down and confined walls of Site 100 until she stood before the one-way mirror that looked over the containment chamber. There it stood, stationary on top one of several hexagonal pillars found in this enclosure. The deer was looking directly at High Parkane through the glass. The researcher could tell if it stared with wonder, confusion, or some emotion beyond human comprehension. I moved on. She could see plenty more of the deer in, in the following days. It was not worth looking at more than she had to. She walked over to room TA-209 and peeked inside. She could see many of her colleagues practicing their lines for procedure 410-Cassini. Most people would smile at the crazy display before her, but Hyde did not smile. This play was not a laughing matter. If they screwed up, they'd be good as dead. Hyra arrived at the lounge room to make herself a cup of coffee and her anxiety medic and take her anxiety medication. It gave her life at a time when she desperately needed it. Containing SCP-2845 wasn't physically exhausted, but it was sure was mentally taxing. The secretary had just begun pouring water into the coffee machine when her phone buzzed. I sighed. Did Roberts want to come back inside already? I burst into the center communica of communications room, already out of breath, having raced across half the facility. Five of her colleagues were already present in the chamber, and none acknowledged her arrival despite her abrupt entrance. They all had their eyes trained on the monitor, hooked up to the western wall. She was about to yell at them, demanding an explanation. The words left her when she saw what they were captivated on. It was a live feed of a massive pileup in Times Square, a fire was raging from a car when it exploded, and a building adjacent to it caught a blaze. This carnage wasn't what filled High with a sense of dread. It was the people she saw. They were melting right before her eyes. They were screaming in pain and terror as their skin slowly sank into a shape with that no longer resembled anything human. Muscle tissue peeled off until you can make out the distinct white coloration of the bones. The bones visible do not appear to be broken despite mass dislocation. She saw a skull float seamlessly atop a mountain of flesh and half a custom ribcage with tendrils wrapped around it in various intervals now slowly receding into the general mass. She looked on in horror as she saw a lower jaw of a man melt off of his face and fall onto his clothes. One of his eyes slid down to what should have been his throat. The eye appeared to look as if fully operational despite being dislocated to such a degree, and in spite of most of the people being her officially disfigured at, at a point, the people continued to crawl along the asphalt. Are, are, are they? She watched in, in horror as a little boy was being dragged into the flame, in, into the frame. He kicked and screamed as he melted. The remains of the victims dragged him outside of, her, of the little restaurant and into the light. He cried for his father as he struggled against the flesh. He desperately grabbed onto the door frame until he lost his grip and fell forwards into the mass. The screaming faded into the gurgling noise as he appeared to be choking due to his vocal cords melting into the, his esophagus. His body melted and mixed into the mash of bodies. Soon she couldn't make out the boy amongst the mountains of flesh. He was a part of it now. An emergency broadcast message cut the forest short. The Foundation's logo and slogo was plastered in white at the top. It was then followed by a passage detailing others, but Hai didn't say to, to find out what it was saying. Hai backed out of the room and her legs trembled slightly. She felt like she was going to vomit. Hai was used to horrific sights. She had seen Procedure 460 Buffaloes perform firsthand after all, but was she 
I had just witnessed filled her with a new sense of dread and disgust. Kaya's thought were cut off by a buzzing of her phone once again. She reached into her pocket in trembling hands and glanced at the screen. Now who was calling her? Daniel Roberts. She felt goosebumps once again crawl over her body. She had completely forgotten about him. She was the only person she was the only person who knew he was outside. Her mind flashed back to the boy on the screen, causing her to grimace. D Dan! Daniel! I, 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 I'm sorry. She turned on her heels, running back down the hall. I, I am so sorry. I, I have no idea what's happening. I saw, I watched, I... Hi? Is that you? Where have you been? You have to come out here for a second. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, something's going... I, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. I'm coming to get you right now. Hold on. Hi ran past the glass of the deer chamber without so much as a glance in its direction, unaware at any changes to its position or activities. Th th there must have been a breach or something. A breach? Hold on a second. You need to calm down. Everything is just perfect right now. Come see for yourself. It's such a nice day out today. I arrived at, the, at an elevator and slammed her hand on the down button. She was panting profusely from having just ran full speed through the halls of the site. N no, Dan. It, it's New York. The, the whole city. It's burning. It's boiling. It, it, it didn't... I was not gra gasping for air now, her ice racing faster than a bullet train. It's something... I don't... Oh, God. What are we? Tears started running run down her cheeks as she knelt o over, beginning to feel lightheaded. I wanted to scream, but she couldn't. She couldn't. She could barely speak now. Hey, 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 now. Calm down, hi. You're all right. You're all right. I'm here for you. You need to calm down. Just relax. Let's do some breathing exercises. Just breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Come on, do it with me now. Breathe in, breathe out. She listened to the calm words of her companion. She started to take large breaths of air with audible gasps. It was now dawning on her how out of breath she was. I had just had filled her lungs with CO2 from how badly she was handling her breathing during, during her full-on sprint up and down facility just moments ago on top of her racing heart. Slowly she felt herself cooling down with only a little. The down arrow blinked to life above and a pleasant ding was heard. I looked at the metallic doors parted ways for her. She felt a twang of relief wash over her body as she stepped inside. Thank you, Daniel. I, I think I'm starting to feel better now. She exhaled as she leaned against one of the walls. You, you always know how to help me. Thank you. There you go. You shouldn't overwork yourself like that. You took your medication today, right? I pressed a button that led to the ground floor. No, no, I didn't. There is no time. Come and open the door for us. You'll feel much better out here. Getting fresh air always helps calm the nerves. She had her phone pressed against the, her right ear when an alarm rang out. She yelped and accidentally moved her phone away from her ear. Her call was terminated automatically, and her screen was now on lock menu without warning in the middle of the screen. She put on a hand to her left ear as she opened the message. The foundation logo with the words SK Class Scenario and white font at the top of the screen. Below, it was a message in similar white font. To all Foundation personnel, you are to shelter in a place until further notice. We are experiencing an, an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. We don't fully understand what is happening at the moment, but rest assured we will be relaying updates as soon as we can. What we do understand, however, is that making contact with the outside world will result in immediate death. You are to stay inside and shelter in place. Do not, under any circumstances, go outside. Be on standby for further instructions. The Administrator. All, all the work she had done to stabilize her breathing became inconsequential as she read the message. Her phone was ringing. For the past hour, the device had only brought her nothing but bad news. She knew nothing. Nothing good could come from it, and yet she answered the phone again despite herself. Hi. Hi. Where are you? You said you, you would open the door for me. What's going on? Tears began to well, well up in her eyes, but her voice did not waver. D Daniel, I can't. You know, we have to shelter in place immediately. 
It's an XK. Some kind of XK event is happening. Oh no, that sounds horrible. Please come open the door, hi. I don't want to be alone without you. N no, Dan, I I can't. We've been told to shelter in place. It's dangerous out there. I, I'm so, so sorry. What? Are you okay, hi? What are you talking about? The sun is so warm and nice right, right now. This can't be an XK. N no, Dan. I saw it. It was on the cameras. It, it it was horrible. Children were melting. Melting, goddammit. Her eyes voice cracked. Tears began running down her face. What do you mean? You aren't making any sense. We're, we're outstanding. Okay, let's just talk about this later. Just please let me inside. I want to be with you again. I can't handle being separated from you like this. I saw the massive doorway just down the hall with its automatic locks sealed into place. It was more of a prison vault door, keeping the most dangerous and valuable locked inside. I shook her head and hung up the phone. She quickly, after she quickened her pace, making her way to the door in seconds. Her friend was right. She had let him in, in the right way. She couldn't just leave him out there to die and melt. Maybe she had time to save him. Y yeah, New York is like hundreds of miles away. <laughs> There's no way he could have reached us by now. Kai grunted her teeth and looked fearfully into the terminal. On the side of the wall, she was talking to herself again. Kai ignored it and quickly began inputting her credentials. What, what the hell are you doing? Kai jolted at the start of commanding voice. Uh, no, sorry, that was the wrong person. What the hell are you doing? Kai jolted at the start of commanding voice that boomed from behind her. Kai spun around and the terminal saw an NTF agent, Grim Donnie, play. She was fully dressed in her uniform, and you couldn't see an inch of skin on her except for her helmet, which she had pressed underneath her elbow. Rem scowled at high, and her deep violet eyes, which I could clearly make out despite being over ten meters away. We were told to, t to shelter in place. What do you think you're doing? Rem began quickly advancing towards high. Step away from the door now! Rem started making making her way across the room to confront her colleague more severely when the vault door opened up. I had already finished unlocking the door before Rem had demanded her to stop. The automated system slowly slung the door inwards. The sunlight engulfed the left side of the room with fresh air and familiar rays of sunlight. Rem gasped as she was caught right in the sun gaze. As soon as the rays embraced Rem, she let out a horrific scream and she attempted to shield her uncovering face from the beams, but it did nothing. Rim pressed her hands against the face and and tried to nullify the pain, but as soon as she did, her gloved hands slipped right under her skin. Now overcome by a new sense of panic, she tried to pull her hands away from her face, but it was no use. Her hands had melted into her head, appearing as she had always been structured like this. She tried to walk away, but her legs gave way, falling to the floor. I watched in horror as the MTF agent melted into her clothes. A room filled with pungent stench of iron blood pulled onto on the floor amongst the guts and pus. The mass that was her colleague twitched and writhed onto the floor. Hissing sounds could be heard as her body seemed to boil. Bubbles of air floated to the top and popped. Meanwhile, the screaming soon trailed off and instead seemed to melt into groans and moans. Hi, Perkang screamed and triggered an emergency alarm on the terminal. With the alarm initiated, the door slammed shut, leaving the only light visible to be fluorescent lights that hung above. Even now, being isolated from the outside world, Rem could continue to melt. Hi could no longer find her face. It had sunk below the flesh, and yet it spoke. There you are. I was so worried about you. Come over here and into the light. It, it's such a wonderful day today. That's not a. There's not a cloud in the sky. Rem's eyes had had resurfaced, thrusting at ground level. Her deep violet eyes were unmistakable. It stared up at High and blinked. High felt her heart drop. This thing that stood in Rem's place did not sound like Rem. It didn't even her speech patterns. Come on, dear. We are no longer need to hide our true selves. We can be together and be a family.